Okay, so it's my pleasure to be here, and uh, thanks to uh, Professor Jiao for invitation, and also thanks to our uh, uh, East Asia Studies Department. So, uh, when Professor Jiao can, okay, hold it. Okay, you can still hear me, right? Okay, good. So when Professor Jiao was speaking Chinese, I was excited for a moment. Wow, should I speak Chinese today? You know, that is the pressure. And then he's speaking English, okay. I have to speak, so we actually never communicate if I should do this in English or in Chinese. So by the minutes I arrived here, I was still, I was still wondering and debating, like, should I do this in Chinese or should I do this in English? And then I guess in English. And uh, I have a YouTube channel, and many of my YouTube channel subscribers are very interested to see me speaking English, because I occasionally speak some, we call it Chinglish, because a very heavy accent in Chinese, but still English in my channel. So they all laugh at me, say, hey, can you really speak English? Um, sure, I can. <laughs> so, okay, let's start. Uh, this is uh, the topic and uh, as Professor Jiao already talked about, traditional Chinese percussive arts and their application in Western compositions for percussion. Um, actually, well, I thought about this topic first because that was my topic for my lecture recital when I received my doctor degree. That was a requirement. I had to do a lecture recital. And then I thought about this topic is, you know, the best that I can offer. And then today is a great opportunity because we are in the East Asia study department. So I think this should be really appropriate. So that's why I choose this. But also I think today we're going to extend the boundary a little bit. It's a little bit more than percussion and also a little bit more than music. So hopefully you can also know a little bit more Chinese culture from my lecture recital. And then the meaning of the lecture recital actually more about the lecture than the recital because the lecture is the core information that I want to offer to you. But whenever there is a music example needed instead of a listen to any recordings or watch any videos, I'm gonna play. And my partner, Daryl Belcher, will play with me today. So, okay, so let's talk about this topic. Um, so I guess I don't need to do any more of my uh, self-introduction because you already know who I am. And then, but I want to talk about how I started to learn traditional Chinese percussion. Because as you can see, I'm from China. But I didn't know Chinese percussion from my early years. Uh, when I was young in China, most Chinese students, and actually most of the percussionists in many countries, we study Western percussion. I start from marimba. I don't know if you know about the instruments like a giant cellophone. Yes. Uh, then I start to study snare drum, uh, study timpani, and then all the orchestra like cymbals, all of those. And then uh, I, my first year in China, actually, I did in electronic engineering in China before I did music. And then, because a lot of uh, things happened, and I came here to do music. And then, in my undergrad studio, I started to see people from all over the world. And what made me feel so fancy is that everybody from their own culture kind of know their music a little bit. For example, I have a friend from Dominican Republic. He can play the like scraper like crazy. He's like a magician, it's like that kind of thing, you know, Bruce Lee kind of a scraper. It's like, oh, that's cool. I also have friends from like a Cuba Haitian, and they can play congas and bongos really nice. And then I started thinking about myself. I'm from China, but what about the unique thing that I can do? What about Chinese percussion? How much I know about Chinese percussion? Well, the first thing I know, definitely the instruments. I saw them so many times, and then I hear them, you know, in movies, in, in games, and all sorts. Then I thought about they are not only instruments. You know, Chinese culture is pretty long. We should have our traditional music. But what is really Chinese traditional music? When I ask you this question, can you imagine how Chinese music sounds like? What instrument they use? What format they play? Is that called as a response as African music play? Or are they all written out like Western 
classical music, or improvisation, like jazz music, or what? So that become my interest, and also make me feel that, yes, as a Chinese person, I should know more about my own culture. Then, in the summer, I went back to China during the summer break, and then find a local teacher really start to study the traditional Chinese music. And that's where I am, you know, with you here. So, when we talk about Chinese percussion, or say, when the Chinese percussion was introduced to the world, it's about the same physics or the same steps that I, I must myself learn percussion. So there are four phases in past. So we're going to talk about each of them. The first thing, of course, instruments. That's the most obvious thing to see, right? Everybody can see the drum. When I saw the drum, it's like, yeah, I know how to play it. Boom, you get a sound. So other people think about the same. The, actually, I should say the most famous Chinese percussion, is a percussion instrument are actually tam-tams or gongs. Think about all the most famous orchestra in the world, no matter in which country. Most of their guns, as one word, Wuhan. It's a city in China. 90% of the guns, well, I didn't really do the research, but to my memory, 90% of the guns were imported from Wuhan. That's the first instrument that really go out of China and make it you know, worldwide, universal. So today, I have two gongs. Uh, actually, I'm going to get my gong beater. You may see this type, right? Kind of like a black, gold, and black, and then hit it. I, because I have to move everything for myself today, so I brought a very small gun, the bigger gun could be that large, but I didn't want to, you know, kill myself. So here it is, small gun. <laughs> Very nice, right? If I don't mute it, it can rain forever. And then we have another type of gong, this one called wind gong. Like Oh, I love it. I love it. One of my favorite. So first question, what's the difference between tam tam and the gong? That's the first thing we should know about traditional Chinese percussion instruments. They look the similar, they sound similar, but they are actually a little bit different. So for a gong, you should, you're supposed to hear a pitch. You know, either like A sharp or whatever. There should be a pitch, certain pitch. That become a gong. But for tam tam, the overtones are so wealthy and all the overtones are so loud. So you are not supposed to hear a certain pitch. You should hear like wah, 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 wah. That's a tam tam. So if you know in the day you talk about to your friends and you know you can definitely show off, hey, I know what's the difference between a gong and a tam tam. That's the first instrument. Then second instrument came to people's eyes are those Chinese tom toms. Okay. Uh, well, they call it. Chinese toms. Actually, we have our own name. We call it a bian. Bian means flat. So if you directly translate it, it was called flat drum. Okay. So you probably see that a lot, even in some like the Chinese movies. I don't know, like Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan. You know, when they in Chinatown, and then if there's any music happening, you see that drum. And it actually like interact with Western music more. So you probably know, like, if you see those two, what do you call them? They're drum sets, right? But they're a little bit different. We don't see the normal tom-tom that we can see, right? We don't see the large symbols, like right symbol, crash symbol, or head heads. Well, there's a one low boy there, but time doesn't count. So you don't see those. Is that? Here is the Chinese palm, right? And then here you see the wood blocks. And here's another Chinese palm. 
And then here is the uh, China symbol. So I want to show you the Chinese symbol. Chinese symbol look like this. Should have a out here. So this is the shape of Chinese symbol. You can see the edge behind the curve back, right? And then when you play them, you play them together, they're quite loud. <coughs> so different than orchestral symbols, or different than the symbol that you would use in drum set. Actually, right now people are still still using this kind of a giant symbol, China symbol, they call it China symbol on drum set just to have a special effect. But instead, if you see this one, it's more like a Turkish symbol shape, right? So that's the difference, so China symbol. One Chinese percussion instrument became part of the drum set. Actually, Chinese percussion instrument was involved in the early drum set. That was the very first time in percussion sale that African America, uh, African Americans and the Chinese people, both groups in the US, kind of work together to develop the drum set. So originally, the drum set only has a large bass drum, like this one, or here, and a snare drum. They came from miniature. And originally, actually multiple people played them. One player played bass drum, one player played a snare drum. And later on, when they were do, doing gigs outside, they said, well, how about if myself play two instruments so that nobody share money with me? I got all the money. Yes. So they started to do that. One person started to play the bass drum and the snare drum, both with sticks before they had a paddle, so both with hands. And later on, one day, somebody, some genius people, some genius group of people, they walked through the Chinatown in the US, and then they saw some Chinese opera singers and accompaniment on the street. And the traditional Chinese percussion section, which we'll, I'll introduce and then we'll try that today, are normally supposed to be played by four people um, in professional field. And in some special Chinese opera, it's supposed to be played by five people, only percussion. But you can imagine when they sing that on the street, there you cannot really get five percussionists every time to start an opera. So those people also start to put all the toys together. They call it a trap toy, a trap table, play all the toys together, and have one person, or maybe two, to start to do that with wood blocks, with you know, small gun, with China symbol, all of this. And then the players, the drum set players, they saw Chinese opera players. So, oh, that's cool. That person can make so many colorful sounds. We should add that to drum set. Then they add the Chinese tom toms and all the toys to drum set. That was really early version of drum sets. And it was even funny. So you can see the China tom. This one, it's a wood body. And then we use buffalo skin as the drum heads. And you can see how this drum structure, they use the nails to make the drum hat stay there. Um, but there's a downside. There's no tension, screw, screw tension, so you cannot adjust the tension. And then if the weather is too humid, then the drum sounds like <laughs> doesn't make any sound. And then during the winter, if the weather or the, the you know, like really dry in the air, and then the drum got very high pitch, and sometimes you can correct the drum. So with a very heavy industry history, you know, people in the US start to make those uh, tension drums, as we can see, like the same structure as a snare drum. Well, this one's head, okay. Uh, yeah, as a snare drum, so they have the tension, tension rods, and then they can change the uh, tension of the drum heads, but without snare, so they call them tom toms. A few years later, Chinese people somehow learn from the tom tom and think, oh, that's cool. They can change the tension of the drum. We can have you know, better quality of the drums. So Chinese people made this. There are usually five drums in a row. You probably cannot see uh, the instrument a little bit tall, but I brought three today here, drum in a row. And then they start to play this instrument. It came from Tom Tom, but Tom Tom, Tom came from this one. So after a huge travel, came back to China, and then they produced this one. We call it a pai, called a drum in a roll. And then 
Right now, this one became the traditional Chinese percussion. But really, this one is pretty young. I think it's a little bit older than my parents, but definitely younger than my grandparents. But they're still traditional Chinese percussion. Okay. Oh, stay here. So that's the very early stage of the Chinese percussion in the Western world. Uh, yeah, China symbols, we just talk about it. So now I'm going to play a piece on the traditional Chinese drum, and the piece called Rolling Walnuts. So this one is the traditional Chinese percussion music, and I want to talk about the background about this music. Um, this piece is particularly from Shanxi province. Uh, it's kind of in the middle of China, but it's a very, very dry place. It's kind of like a Las Vegas, if you compare it here, right? Very dry, like where do you come from? <laughs> Las Vegas. So they are very careful about plants, the, the fruits, because there's just not enough water. So they um, definitely grow a lot of the walnuts because they're very dry fruits, as you can imagine. And after uh, they got the fruits, um, they use sunshine to dry the walnuts on the top of their roofs. And afterwards, they build a pipe through the uh, top of their roof to the ground. So they roll all the walnuts through the pipe to the ground and they can get the harvest. And this is uh, rolling walnuts, that's the piece for celebrating the harvest. And it's all, so this is a good example that most of the Chinese percussion, traditional percussion pieces, they have a story. Okay, is similar to uh, what uh, equivalent to a uh, Western concept as uh, music theater or theatrical music, right? Like when, when a musician plays something, but they also act to make it to be a play or make it be theatrical. So most of the Chinese percussion uh, pieces are like that. So most of the traditional Chinese percussion, they have some choreography with it, so they can tell the story. And because they are harvest music, celebration music, so most of them are also uh, with an ensemble. And that's the thing, because even though they could be four people, eight people play on the same instrument, but still, each person, for this piece particularly, only play one drum. So people always try to explore the new sound from this instrument, so that we can have more variety rather than boom, 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 boom for you know, five minutes or so. Uh, so most of the Chinese instrument, when you hear those pieces, they try to find new sounds from different part of the drum. Uh, so with that you know, in your mind, so I'm going to demonstrate this piece. I'm going to put this aside so some engineer don't get mad at me. Okay. So rolling water.
Okay, so that was the first part. See the traditional piece, how it looked like, and hopefully you feel fun. And then if one day, uh, if you travel to China, you know, try to find a percussion ensemble. To me, percussion are very fun. Okay, a little bit more fun than other instruments. I'm very biased, but okay. So phase two. After people know about, or after people watch those traditional music, then they try to get deeper because, yeah, traditional music, how we can use it in Western compositions. So, uh, second, second phase, they go to the culture and the philosophy. And I want to, the first thing I want to bring is this thing that draw people's attention. Yi Jing. How many of you know about Yi Jing? Oh yeah, okay, cool. That's great, so that I can talk about it. So, um, but still, you know, you make me a little bit nervous. I'm trying to talk about Chinese in front of your great professors from East Asian studies. And all my Chinese knowledge came from my high school, from my high school Chinese teacher. So if I said something right, credit to me. Okay, I learned a lot. But if I say something wrong, I'll call my teacher. Okay, probably he told me wrong. <laughs> okay, so I'll try my best, but I love it. So this one has two words. Uh, well, first of all, talk about the pronunciation. Yi Jing is the Chinese pronunciation, and uh, I know we have a uh, English spelling. Um, probably people call it I Ching or something. Um, I think you can learn it, right? Yi Jing, how about everybody repeat me just once? Yi Jing. Perfect, that's it. So if you go out, say this. That's the original pronunciation. Okay. Um, it has two characters, right? Second character, Jing. You can, it, it, it's supposed to be structured, but you can understand it as easy as a book. Then, it's a book about what? What about the first character? What is it E? Yeah, that's the part that I learned from my high school teacher. That's good. So, um, so you can see, there are, there's a, those are all different type of uh, writing. Uh, that's like very, very ancient Chinese from pictures. And then, developed to different directions. And right now, uh, that's the current character that we will write, right? So it has a lot of development. So what can you see from the first character? Yeah, I can probably see it. Oh, no. yeah, here it is. Okay. So these two little symbols looks a little bit like two hands, right? A little bit. And then on the top, looks like two container. So one explanation of this word from its origin is to pull the water from one container to the other. That means exchange. Okay, that's one meaning of it. And then it has a lot of a development and you can, you can see it differently. Oh, by the way, if I say anything wrong, I'm sure that the professor will correct you in the class. Okay, so. Hopefully I got it right. Uh, then, you see there are a lot of development until this one, number 10. What does it look like? It doesn't look like hands with uh, two containers anymore. It looks a little bit like an animal, right? Does it? Kind of, maybe, lizard, birds, yeah. Could it be birds or could it be lizard? And there is a one explanation that this one is a uh, uh, fake words, Tongjiazi, fake words to a uh, uh, lizard, to Xi Yi de Yi. So it's not only lizard, it's a special type of lizard. It's chameleon. So it actually changed color, the, the lizard that can change color, right? Then the character's meaning got developed to change. Makes sense? Because that thing can change color. And then also, in the I Ching, in the other book, it has more variety of meanings. Yeah, if you know Chinese character, there are, each character always has multiple meanings. 
Uh, it also means easy, I guess, because I change the color, you cannot see me. No, I'm just faking this, okay. But if you can, I change the color, you cannot see me, making, me, making my life easy. But also make your life not easy. So another meaning of it is not easy. Uh, that's not the official explanation, but the meanings are correct, I believe. So it has multiple meanings. Then come back to this book. Then we got it. It names the book of changes. What's this book is about? Actually, this book is a divination book. Uh, did I say it right? Divination, right? So, like uh, when they when they do the thing, uh, they use like fifty stocks as a group, and they're shake, 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 and then this one came out, and then uh, after a long process, and then you. Uh, you can predict the, the, the result of your, the thing that you want to do, or the thing that you ask, right? Like, the, am I going to get a good job or whatever? I right? should do that. So, that philosophy is very important to uh, Chinese culture. If you haven't uh, learned it, or, and if you are interested in Chinese culture, please try to read this one. Try to read this book. It's so important because. Confucius, uh, Xunzi, I don't know if there's an English name for him, or Xunzi. Uh, and also, Taoism, uh, Laozi, like the most important philosopher in China, they all, in some degree, try to explain Yi Jing, or they cite Yi Jing, you know, occasionally. So that's kind of like the very core, important part of Chinese culture. So this culture, yeah, so I should explain this. So when they, when they do the divination, um, you, you probably see this, you know, many places. Uh, so it, it has the hexagrams, and actually, uh, I mean, three could be one hexagram, and then uh, when you really do the use the teaching, it has 64 of them. Uh, yeah, and then the so top have eight options, and the bottom have eight options, and combined together eight times eight. 64. And then uh, those are 64 different possibilities well, when you try to get the result of the thing that you, you were asked about. Um, so this thing made one very important, the famous composer, very interesting. His name is John Cage. So John Cage is, if you ever heard, well, if you know a little bit about contemporary music, he's a very important, maybe the, one of the core composer to compose um, like a contemporary music. And to him, he has several ideas, music ideas, composition ideas, that are very important uh, to the later composers. Uh, first of all, he thinks, he, well, when we talk about the music is an uh, imitation of the nature, right? We all think about that, like uh, where the symbol uh, came from, maybe try to imitate the, the thunder or whatever, or at least in the music, if you hear, you know, Think about standard, right? If you hear boom, you know they even have a polka about this topic, or you, you can you can hear some other sound. Uh, so music, in in a short story, is imitation of the uh, of the nature. But what the re what the nature is really is actually a lot of chaos, right? Like human being cannot really control the nature. A lot of, a lot of the things happen around us is by chance. For example, I'm standing here, maybe. No, I try to get a very quiet moment, but maybe there is a chance somebody in the audience is <coughs> I didn't control it, but I received that information. Is that chance? A lot of sounds happening in our world because of a chance. But are they noises? That's the question. Are they noise or are they music? Depends. For example, I'm speaking right now. And I'm sure that Beethoven Symphony 9 is, you know, great music to, to you all. But if I'm speaking, meanwhile, we have a Beethoven 9 as the background. To me, that moment, the Beethoven 9 is noise, because you cannot hear me. But maybe for some of you, you want to hear the music, and then my speech becomes noise. Okay, so either way. That led us to think about what's really music? What is really noise? 
It actually came from the listener's attitude. If you want to appreciate the sound, then it, it could become music. But if we don't like the sound, no matter how beautiful the piece is, Tchaikovsky or Chopin, we can still think about that as a noise. We just don't want to hear it. Right? So that's a very important theory from John Cage. And you probably heard about the piece 4 minutes and 33 seconds. That's one of his most famous songs. Uh, actually, during that time, the player didn't need to play any notes. Or say, professionally, we play the silent. We play nothing. And then how about let's experience that? Just for about 10 seconds. Let's try to open our ears. Let's try to open our mind. Try to hear any single little noise around you to see if you can discover anything that you never heard before. Okay, let's just try 10 seconds. So it's a, well, I should have a one page, but excerpt from 4 minutes, 33 seconds. So it's now, okay, let's give it a try.
Um, he, he learned it like Wan Wu is, a, is, is one kind of concept in Chinese language uh, because when we come in English, we have a tent, we have hangar, we have a thousand, and then that's it, right? Then we have a meeting. There, there's nothing in between, correct? They're all, yeah? Okay, thanks. Cool. I'll prove I'm an American friend, so that's good. And then we have a billion, we have a trillion, we have all of those, but we, we, we don't have something in between. But in China, 10,000 is, is one thing. After 1,000, we have, we, we call it a one. So 10,000 things are one. So he, he also took that from Chinese language and then to indicate he wanted to do that for everything. Okay. And this uh, 10,000 things also came, uh, if you learn uh, Dao De Jing, uh, uh, in Taoism by, well, they said by Lao Tzu, but, you know, yeah. So, <laughs> you won't understand. So, uh, so in Dao De Jing, they have a Dao create. Dao is like the, the, the rule of the universe thing. So Dao create one, one create two, two create three, three create everything, or create thousand, ten thousand things, or so one, okay. So that's the piece. Uh, originally, I, I designed this this little stopwatch so that you can I can click this and then then play. Um, but since I'm a little bit farther away, so I'm just gonna use my stopwatch uh, when I perform it. But I'm gonna explain. It. So in the music score, uh, you can see those uh, lines and dots. So each page is one minute long. Okay, and then all the numbers indicate in what second. They're supposed to be things happen. And he categorized the in percussion instrument into four different groups. Um, M means metal, and W means wood, and S means skin. So here we call it drums. And then the A is anything else or all other. So you can do anything else. Uh, he highly recommend anything electronic involved, like radio or um, like a whistle or anything. So, for example, in this music, oh, actually, let me go over there so I can demonstrate. Mm. So you can see the music. Right before the fourth second, uh, well, the, the, the horizontal lines, they mean the dynamics, so they are not supported. Anything above the lines, further from the lines, louder. And then below the lines, anything further below means softer. So from pianissimo, pianissimo, metal forte, and then fortissimo, uh, like that. So right before four seconds, you have a wood, and it's uh, like a below metal forte, so I may play like this. And then uh, you have a metal right after the four second, but it's louder, so I can play like this. And then uh, the nice second, you have a slightly line, so actually that could indicate to a uh, decrescendo, right? It's kind of like a from loud to top, so I can play drum roll. Like that. And then you can see at the 15, towards the end of 15 seconds, you see another uh, little dot on the wood. And then you see a very soft wood and the two strong skin. Uh, in the second six. And then another wood. Louder. And then softer metal. And then softer wood. And then you see another. So I'm trying to do all those things with Chinese instruments, but I'm running out of ideas about what other could be from China. And my parents, one year, they went to a Chinese seashore named the Beidaihu and brought this back to me. So since it's from China, so I call it a Chinese instrument, okay. okay. <laughs> other, okay. So you see the other uh, with the very soft wood. Yeah, I did the crescendo, you notice. Okay, and then, uh, then we have a lot of uh, silence. Until second and third degree. And then we have a uh, metal, and then we have a soft and strong wood, and then we'll have the skin, the drum. So I'm going to play this piece for you, uh, with you looking at the score, and I'll use my stopwatch. So you should think about this piece more like a, in a quiet ocean. You see some small islands. Each island has a little bit of sound, like that. Okay, let's give it a try. Plus.
really my first time that all the audiences can see my music score. So if I play wrong or right, you all know that gets me very nervous. <laughs> Good thing is that I didn't show you the, I don't show you the stopwatch, otherwise you can be even more scared. Okay, so I can imagine that you may think about it, like, yeah, is that really music? What are you doing now? Um, <laughs> it actually is. Uh, it's, that's the music composed like, in, in the, the early 20th century. And then later on, they, many different composers used the concept and composed a lot of, composed a lot of other you know, music. And if you hear the, the um, uh, contemporary music at the very first time you may not get it, Believe me, when I first time hear this, I thought like, eh, I'm not going to learn it, I'm going to play it, what, what, what's that for? Uh, but once you know more about it, you start to appreciate the thinking, appreciate the philosophy from it, it becomes more interesting. Okay, so uh, very quickly, I'm going to demonstrate another piece uh, from the same, same music, so it's another minute. This time you all see the music, so you can uh, kind of try to think about it or, or try to experience the different timber more or ho hopefully it's a little bit more fun. And this minute I'm going to play. Uh, I use a lot of uh, weird instruments. So you can see, uh, well this one, it's a frog, okay. Sounds like frog. And this one you may see. Here it is in cartoon. Okay, that's definitely from my home. I talked to my wife, hey, can you not cook tonight? I'm gonna borrow it. And she says, sure, as long as you're paying for the dinner. Okay. <laughs> and then a little bit of pitch to gong. They're gongs because they have pitch. And then, yeah, I said, well, you know, the, the cooker is here, so how about this? Pretty nice, right? You can use that as an instrument. Similarly, very nice. And then I have a, that's my lunch box. I normally eat salad with it. I lost some weight because of it, so I think I should appreciate it. So I should hit it in a concert. Like that. Okay, um, cool. That's about the instrument I'm going to play on. And this time you don't have to use it, but I still have my stopwatch. Let's experience another minute of jump food.
a little bit more fun, a little bit, right? With, with this one, right? More things happening. And I purposely choose the movement that are not too difficult, otherwise I can kill myself, you know, like they could have like thousand, really ten thousands of notes in the page. And yeah, that's a lot. Cool. So after the second part, the third part. History is like a circle. So we circle back to the instrument again. As I said, um, we always try to have different sound from the instrument. And then Western composers start to think about that too. Sometimes Western composers, but sometimes also Chinese composers who compose uh, Western music, right? Still, still in the Western music setting. Um, so, for example, um, well, yeah, let's talk about that first. So I have one of my favorite composers named uh, Mr. Guo Wenjin. Uh, so he composed two pieces, uh, each for a trio. One piece is for three, three players, each hold a pair of cymbals, and the cymbals are different. So when, they, when he composed that piece, he tried to explore the different sound from the instrument. So that's the cymbal. You can see, uh, normally we play like that. Right, normally play like that. And then um, traditional Chinese percussionists, they start to try to explore new sound possibilities. For example, you can play like this. Cool sound, right? You can also play like this. Or backwards. Or, or, or. So it's very cool that it's only a pair of cymbals but because how different you can strike it, and then you can have different sound. Uh, so he has another piece. It's about gongs, uh, like about six gongs, different size, like that. So for that piece, more gong beaters. This one doing all the job. I think I should pay him the most. So uh, okay, so that means uh, try here. So you can have the center sound. You can have the sound from edge. And probably from here, kind of mix, can use that, can use that, you can do it from the side. Ooh, different pitch. Right? So he has those uh, different music. So uh, the little piece that I'm going to demonstrate with you today, demonstrate for you today, uh, is uh, drama. So we're going to just do a little bit excerpt of it. Uh, because it's supposed to be a trio music. So in this music, you can see uh, above the notes, they have a different markings a little bit, right? different shape, and each shape indicates you uh, one way to play. So right now, I'm going to uh, welcome my partner, Del Belcher, Del Belcher, come to play with me for this service. Chinese opera has four different elements. Uh, we call Chang, 
念作答。So if we directly translate tongue singing and 念 dialogues, uh, or or just speaking, and then 作 could be acting or could be dancing because both of their actings are kind of dancing like anyway. And then 打 is probably everybody's favorite part is the martial arts. Uh, so those those are the four elements. When you see the Chinese opera, you will always see those four things. And the core instrument group of this thing is the percussion section. So I have the instrument pretty much here. Um, the 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 conductor instrument is this little drum. Okay. Normally, people have to sit to play and then set their leg to a certain level so that uh, the stick can hit their leg, so that the stick can hit the drum every time at the perfect angle. So if you don't have the perfect angle, it won't sound good. I'm going to give it a try. Ah, you see the second sound? Yeah, that's the perfect sound. It's a really, really difficult instrument. Something like that. But if you hit a different angle, doesn't make that sound. So that's a very hard thing. And then when people learn this traditional like opera rhythms, uh, or when they play, play the opera, there's no right and wrong music. Everybody is supposed to learn like a hundred or something rhythms and then memorize all of them. And then remember how the leading drummer, the leading drummer is also going to conduct with hand signs, with the rhythm to cue in and cue out. So everybody, when they play, they have to remember all the rhythms and the when to use them and how to use them. So today, how about, let's give a try. So I'm going to have three volunteers. I'm going to train you maybe in two minutes or three, and then we'll make a percussion quartet. We'll go out to make money, okay? And then I won't cut your parts, okay? Uh, I could play by, by one, but we can do that to four. So anybody want to try? Yes, please. Okay. And then, yes, uh, with the green shirt, please, yeah. I just saw the first three. Yes, you, you'll have an have opportunity to. All right, so I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to use this one to uh, replace the, that instrument. Okay, so uh, cool. how about if you do this one and then, yeah, do this. Okay, so actually we have four people, that's right. So let me put this on. Try this little symbol. Okay, cool. And then where's my tighter on? Here it is. Okay, I'll give it to you actually. Yeah, wait a second, I'll give you a symbol too. So okay, so I have care symbol players. So you just use this, you will hit that. Uh, uh, you can hit. Yeah, very good. And then, 提 means this one. Yes. 
you can hear the louder. That's it, right? And also you can hear, that's why it says Tai, because the gong is also Bar, right? So Tai, okay, Da Tai. And then when I say, uh, well, by itself, that gong, uh, can you hear it just in the center? Very nice. And then we call it a Huang. Makes sense, right? Because that's why if you learn Chinese, that's Su Cheng, it's like going down. Uh, Professor Jiao asked me to demonstrate that, and then I asked me to remember, yes, here we go. Uh, so we got Huang, you got Tei, by the symbol itself. You can play it one by one, uh, maybe lady first. So just, just play the da 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 da. Doesn't matter, you can do it, uh, just hold it like that right now. Yeah, they have a traditional way, but it's okay. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So we say the che 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 che. Okay, how about if you try the che 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 che? Okay, how about if I use my vocal and then you try to imitate my vocal with that? So che 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 che. Very good, that's it, that's it, nice. So that's how they learn, that's how they learn. Yeah. You're great, you're great. So the rhythm, so that's fine. There are also combinations. So this one itself is Tai. Those two symbols are Che. Symbol plus small gong together. We call it Tai. Make sense? Tai, Che, Tai. So you hear the consonants to indicate like what instrument to play. But also you hear the pitch bending. Which one is the major one? Which one, you know, supposed to sound? So how about if we play a tei together? Okay, so I'll give you like an orchestra conductor. I'll give you one, two, three, four, everybody uh, volume three, apparently. Okay. Oops, one more time, let's do it together. Okay. That's it, so that's a tei. And then it itself sounds like a huang, right? It's a very, very open sound, huang. But because that's the lowest voice and also the loudest, so uh, kind of like the, the boss, right? And then when the ensemble is playing, like when that playing the ensemble, all, most of the time, all the instruments play all together. So, Tei plus Tong, they call it Tong. <laughs> Makes so much sense. I think that's better than English language, yes? <laughs> Not much easier for me to learn. So, so, so when Chinese people learn all of those rhythms, they need to remember those 100 something lyrics. They, they just remember like 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 a Jin Shu, like, you know, like like the, the lyrics book, and then da te tan tan te tan te tan or ba da te pang te pang te pang te pang te pang te pang te. So they know when to play, what to play. So now let's try that. So the rhythm is da te tan tan te tan te. Huh. That's it, okay. Let's make it slower. Let's make it slower. Okay, first time. Da, te, everybody. Tang. Tang with you. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Cool. So, beginning, ready, go. Da, te, tang. Tang, te, tang, te, tang. Good, last one. It's a short, so you mute it. So, make sure that te you also play. So, actually, you play every time. Da, te, tang, and then tang. Te, ta, te, ta. Right, you play everything. Okay, let's do it one more time. Ready? Ta, ta, te, ta, te, ta. And then try to mute it at the very end. Okay, that's good. Cool. So we're gonna about to do it again. Okay, that's the that's normally the ending of uh, when a character male, you know, get on the stage, they can do a lot of a movement, and then at the very end, they're supposed to have a gesture that's like final, you know, I don't know. Well, that's top of Bruce Lee. Yeah. <laughs> it's not Chinese opera. So they always have a very last uh, feature. So when they do the feature, that's the ending section. You can imagine. Da te tang, te Okay, so we need to end it together. That's the most important thing. There's a story. Like because you know the drum is so important for the for the actors on the stage, so all the new actors came to the to the opera group. They always you know like give the drummer some gift, you know maybe a bottle of wine or, or some some cookie or something. Because if he, he 
if the active actor doesn't treat the drummer better, the drummer can trick him. It's like da te ta ta te ta te ta. Everyone's like, what, what, what? You missed the rhythm. So yeah, so I'm the most important person. So let's let's give it one try, okay? So da te, everybody ta. Then you you have a two in a row, right? Ta te ta te. And by the way, the traditional way to conduct this one is with my right hand. So, da, che, if you see this, that's you. Da, che, yeah, let's give it a try. Only your part. Perfect, that's it. And then I use both hands for everything. Ta, and then, che, ta, che, ta. Double. Okay, cool. Let's give it a try. I'm excited. I'm going to make money, please. <laughs> So you should see my uh, uh, right hand. That's it. I'm gonna face you. So you see my right hand. When you, when you see my right hand, you play with me. Okay. And then you see my right hand too. Ready? Go. Very nice. Yes. Successful. Cool. So you can you can put it on the table. And I have a little gift for you. Each of you. Okay. Oh, four of you. So maybe two of you have to share. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll give you a spare one. But yeah, that's okay. I'll give you one. No no problem. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, prepare for sorry for the next uh, volunteer. Good. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, we're right past this page. Okay. Ah. Uh, Cool. So there's there's uh, the, the piece of work to uh, play. Uh, also involve another instrument. So uh, this is the part of the five. Do you have the other six? Okay. Thanks. There, uh, there's another like a type of a Chinese traditional uh, folk art that. Thank you. They use this to uh, accompany uh, storytelling. So I'm not going to tell a story today, uh, but I'm going to show you. The... Right now, I'm going to play this side, and then for the lower, uh, I'm going to have. Something like that. So this, this thing will be involved in this piece. Um, cool. So, how about if I get Gerald? up again so that he can help me to set up a little bit on the table <laughs> and then we're going to uh, perform the next piece that I want to show you uh, is the uh, Nian from Impressions of a Chinese Opera by Jean Kaczynski and then uh, Jean Kaczynski is my teacher for my undergrad degree in Minnesota somewhere super cold that I didn't know uh, but I went so uh, okay so we don't yeah that can go back so he, he composed this piece. Uh, he's such a nice guy, so to me. He composed this piece when I graduate, kind of like a gift to me. You know, how many teachers are like that? So great. And then, where's my computer? Uh, I think I just, oh, is it over there? Oh, here it is. Thanks, thanks, he's clear. Okay, so, uh, so when he composed this piece, I gave him a lot of information about Chinese traditional instrument, especially uh, traditional music, especially the opera section. Um, uh, so he watched a lot of stuff, including the, the things that we just ex experienced here. And then he didn't copy any of the ideas directly, but instead he used his impression of Chinese opera, composed a three movement piece named Impressions of Chinese Opera. And the first movement is Chang He Zuo in singing and acting. And uh, we're not going to perform that today because we don't have the marimba, the cute one. I'm running out of space in my car, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. And, but we're going to do the second movement uh, today, which is nian. Okay, if you know Chinese, that means dialoguing or uh, speaking. So we're going to do that. So this piece, you will hear a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of the, the Chinese opera percussion that we just experienced uh, beyond and then we'll also have some vocal because it's a Nian movement 
Uh, and then I made the vocal parts for this piece, and then when I designed it, I also did and grab the vocal from the opera directly because of the its impression. So I used the impression of Chinese opera from myself, and then use some you know sound to imitate uh, the sound from opera. So you hear that as well. All right, we're ready. That's the yeah. So, uh, what did you hear? You hear the the session, right? With more variety of rhythms, and probably you already hear the rhythm that we just played. Da te ta ta te ta te ta was in it. Yeah, probably sounds a little bit different, but still in it. Okay. Uh, and also, I want to talk about this instrument. It's from Indonesia, called anklong, and uh, it's a group instrument made of bamboo. Uh, each person is supposed to have a could be as long as like a three octaves. And then you have a group of people that shake the thing together. Yeah, pretty cool instrument. Uh, what else here? Yeah, you know everything. So from about this piece. All right. So let's go to the next uh, one. 
Uh, yeah, so other than the uh, fast board and all of those, and there, there's another type of Chinese art that's being used um, in Western composition, especially in the piece that I'm going to uh, uh, perform for you. Uh, so that the technique, we call it Da Liu, so you can see uh, the, uh, the music score here. So the, the core players for Da Liu is actually two players play the cymbal, both play the cymbals. One play the, on, on the beat, one play off the beat. So it's like a bucko, 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 you know, like that. So it's really, really difficult um, thing. So how about if I get another volunteer try to experience this with me? Anybody think that you have a really strong sense of strong sense of time, really strong sense of rhythm? Yes, please. And they are so brave. Oh, okay, wow. Uh, what was your instrument? Uh, guitar. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, guitar is our friends. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's give it a try. So I'm going to play on the beat, you play the off beat. So how about let's do that, 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 two beats. One, two, ready, go. Very nice. How about a little bit faster? So. Taka 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 One, two, ready, go. Yep, you play it. Uh, yeah, it's okay, let's try one more time. Little bit in the middle. Taka 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 taka. One, two, ready, go. Very nice. That's great. Are you not going to call me? Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I should give you. I'll give you something later. I'll give you something later. I'll, I'll see what's you know valuable, and then will be cool. Um, he's so smart. He's so smart. So did you see what he did? What, what he did? He used one hand to play the dumpy, and used the other hand to play the offbeat. That's that's great. That's how we all started from. But now, how about let me have Daryl back, and then we're going to try something similar. Um, but you know, just to show you. Um, for professionals, especially for percussionists, uh, what we need to do. Okay. Uh, how about let's play a different tempo? So let's make it. One, two, go. Okay. How about let's try just directly the fast tempo? <laughs> Yeah, we can do this a day long. So, uh, do you think the dump is harder or the offbeat is harder? Offbeat? Yeah, actually, uh, different players have different strong hands. For me, the dump is a little bit easier because I, I, I like to keep the beat, keep the lead. And then for Daryl, actually, he's better to play the offbeat. Yeah, because right? then I don't have to be in charge. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, so different kind of a difficulty. But I think overall, well, I, I think you part still a little bit harder. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay. It's harder in different ways. Right. right. If you think about it, you're, if you're on the downbeat, you have to be very consistent. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's not me. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so that compliment to me. So how about let's let's take it. So how about let's let's do something even harder. Let's do acceleration. Okay. So we're going to start from slow, and I'm going to lead the way. He's going to follow me. Maybe we'll fall apart in the third beat or so. Maybe we can. Always a possibility. Yeah, always. And maybe we can we can we can play for another day, like for a day long. So let's give it a try. Made 
Ha, uh, so which means the martial arts. So in this piece, you will hear a lot of the different things that I talked before. Um, one thing that I didn't give it as a, as a topic as, uh, is like, a, you know, the, the melodic elements of Chinese music are pentatonic scale, like based on pentatonic scale. Uh, in Chinese, it fits a lot, universal. So, right, me, so, la, right, like that, that's what it is. Uh, but the, the reason why I didn't put it out is because actually pentatonic scale is not only in Chinese culture. In multiple cultures, in their original music, like in Africa, in the Middle East, you know, like all, like many of their cultures, their original music based on pentatonic scale. But just their tone is different. For us, like the red miso lab, but for African people, maybe a little bit uh, lower than do, and then mid, like a me and a cow, like a pitch in the middle. So it's always a little bit different, but the concept still pentatonic. So I don't think that's the only thing happening in Chinese music. So I didn't address that as a separate topic. You can say it was like. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so you'll, you'll hear that, you'll hear us play some of the hopping style symbols. Um, you'll see the, some choreography, you see the Chinese instruments. Um, basically, most of the stuff that I talked about was in this movement. So how about let me use that as the last piece of today's lecture recital. All right, I should put this somewhere safe. <laughs> 